islands lie in the northern part of the peninsular plateau. As we move further down, we can see this triangular region spread over a part of the Indian peninsula. This is the Deccan Plateau. It lies to the south of the Narmada River with the Satpura Range acting as its base in the north. The Western Ghats and the Eastern Ghats mark the edges of the Deccan Plateau. The Satpura Range flanks its broad base in the north. Towards its eastern extension lie the Mahadev Hills and the Kaimur Hills which are found in Madhya Pradesh and the Maikal Range which is found in Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh. The Deccan Plateau is slightly tilted such that the western side is a little higher in elevation. That is one of the reasons why many rivers like the Mahanadi, the Krishna and the Godavari flow eastwards. Interestingly, the peninsula plateau is not limited to this triangular region. A part of the peninsula plateau extends in some of the northeastern states of India, namely Meghalaya and Assam. Locally, this part of the plateau is known as the Meghalaya Plateau, the Karbi Anglong Plateau and the North Kachar Hills. Today, the Meghalaya and Karbi Anglong plateaus stand detached from the main peninsula block. Do you know why? Well, it is believed that when the Himalayas were being formed, the movement of the Indian plate towards the northeast exerted such a great force that a fault line was created in the process. This fault line was created between the Raj Mahal hills and the Meghalaya Plateau. Years later, the depression formed was filled up by the deposition activity of the numerous rivers that drained the region. This created the detachment between the peninsula block and the Meghalaya Plateau. The Meghalaya Plateau is further subdivided into three. The Garo Hills, the Khasi Hills and the Jaintia Hills. All these hills are named after the tribal groups inhabiting the region. Detached, yet a part of the same landform. Wow. On the western side of the Deccan Plateau, you can see these long stretches of hill ranges running parallel to the western coast. These hill ranges are the Western Ghats. Though the Western Ghats are mostly continuous, there are some gaps in these ranges. These are called passes. The Thal Ghat, the Pal Ghat and the Bhor Ghat are some examples. They allow passage through these mountains. So how high are these mountains? Well, the average height is around 900 to 1600 meters. Now, this might seem less compared to the greater Himalayas that have an average height of 6000 meters. The height of the Western Ghats gradually increases from north to south, where some of the highest peaks of the Western Ghats are found. The Anamudi Peak in Kerala with a height of 2,695 meters is the highest peak in the Western Ghats. In Tamil Nadu, the Toda Betta Peak near Uti is also quite high with an elevation of 2,637 meters. Another interesting feature of the Western Ghats is the role they play in the rainfall pattern of the region. The moisture-laden monsoon winds coming from the southwest direction strike the western Ghats and cause heavy rainfall to the west of the Ghats.
On the other hand, the eastern side of the western Ghats receives lower rainfall. Why? Because by the time these winds cross the hills, they have lost most of their moisture in the western part. Now, this kind of rainfall is called orographic rainfall. The word oro means relating to mountains. Thanks to all the rain, the western side of the western Ghats has high biodiversity with numerous species of flora and fauna found here. stretch from the Mahanadi Valley in the north to the Nilgiris in the south. These hill ranges are parallel to the eastern coast. But do you notice that they are not as continuous as the hills in the western Ghats? They are irregular with many rivers cutting their way through the hills. These rivers drain into the Bay of Bengal. Compared to the western Ghats, the height of the hills in the eastern Ghats is quite low, averaging about 600 meters. That being said, the eastern Ghats is home to famous hill ranges. The Shivaroy Hills, the Chabadi Hills, both of these are located in Tamil Nadu. The highest peak of the eastern Ghats is the Mahindragiri, which is 1,501 meters tall. So, now you have learned the extent of the peninsula plateau and how the western Ghats are different from the eastern Ghats. There is an interesting physical feature associated with the Deccan plateau. It is the Deccan trap. This region here has large deposits of black soil. Can you guess why this region is covered with black soil? Well, the Deccan Trap region witnessed many volcanic eruptions in the past when the Indian plate was still moving northwards. Over time, the lava from the volcanoes continued to accumulate and became solid rocks called igneous rocks. Continuous weathering and erosion of these rocks formed the black soil. Black soil is good for the cultivation of cotton and hence it is also known as black cotton soil. It's fascinating, right? India has such a variety of landforms. <laughs>